And welcome back to the White Night Summer Studio. If you guys never been to San Francisco, today is your chance to do that. And we're moving on to our next speaker uh, from Huge Games. We're going to have Lukas Miedovic, the Senior Developer Relations Manager, right here with us. And you know, sometimes it's hard to actually approach publishers. And now Lukas is going to tell you how to actually create a great one, great pitch. Hello, Lukas. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for inviting and having me here. Hope you everyone are safe in these strange times and, and, and going good. Today, uh, I would like to tell you more on uh, our lessons learned while working with developers, what kind of uh, in terms of like how to prepare to pitch publishers. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we got, we received a lot of uh, a lot of decks. Uh, so based on this, I wanted to share you uh like key uh lessons learned and and guidelines for you to prepare uh when you want to pitch a publisher okay thank you so much the studio is all yours very excited good luck cool thanks so a <clears throat> couple of facts about huge publishing and huge games so uh team huge is uh, more than 560 people uh so far we generated 500 million revenue we have annual digital ad spend 100 million dollars uh, we generate 2 billion impressions each month uh, reaching 190 plus countries uh, our current pub huge publishing portfolio is six games uh, but also huge games develop uh, we developed uh, our games internally as well uh, there are more than uh, 50 uh, people in uh, marketing uh, supporting uh, huge uh, publishing. Uh, so as I mentioned so far, uh, we released five games plus one game is uh, currently in the uh, preparations to be launched soon. Uh, so, so far, the games which we published are Traffic Puzzle, uh, done by Picadilla, a Polish team. Uh, this is like match-free uh, match game. Matchland, another match-free game uh, developed by Dream Team from Ukraine. Chestar, Turbo Labs uh, from Pakistan, uh, which is a board, uh, board chess game. Uh, then Bowland Action RPG, developed by Double Star from Finland and transported by Mobile Monsters uh, from Germany. It's an idle tycoon game. So you can see that uh, our publishing portfolio is, uh, is uh, distinguished in terms of genres. Uh, so first of all, before I will go and uh, deep, dive in, deep dive into publishing the template, uh, there are like a couple of stuff you, would, uh, you need to ask yourself before you approach publisher. So <clears throat> first of all, do you need publisher help? So do you need any financing? Uh, do you need any uh, marketing dollars for UA uh, and scaling and growing your game? Uh, and if you receive uh, this uh, kind of support, uh, will your chances of success increases? So, of course, there is like um, financial support, but uh, good publishers all, all offer uh, also know-how. So uh, that's the first question you need to ask yourself. Uh, <clears throat> another thing is like always good to look at publishers current portfolio and ask yourself whether my game will be good fit. Uh, so in terms of like brand and quality fit, um, is there any like audience overlap uh, of my game uh, comparing to, to publisher game? Uh, and of course, publishers who, 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 uh, who are uh, looking for certain, uh, certain games uh, uh, in certain genres. Uh, they will know uh, how to how this scale this kind of game because scaling uh, different uh, scaling depends on on, on dif different factors. I will tell you more uh, later on uh, about it. Uh, so another question is: Does it make financial sense for both parties? Uh, so will we recoup the investment and make a profit proportional to our other projects? So make sure your game's earning uh, potential matches what publisher would want to recoup and uh, that you can continue to operate, live and grow based on your uh, projected sales and revenue share. Uh, 
Um, ask yourself, can you execute the roadmap uh, which you are pitching to the publisher, whether your plans are realistic and, and you have complete uh, team? And also, uh, are you able to collaborate uh, with publisher on, on a weekly basis? So as I mentioned, for example, us, we are um, supporting studios with know-how on UA monetization product. So are you able to, to work with us on, on, on a weekly basis and, and collaborate to, um, to improve the product uh, and KPIs? So uh, shortly about the pitch deck, of course, pitch deck is a short presentation uh, which overviews uh, the game, uh, how it already performed on the market and your plan to make it better. Uh, Shortly uh, about like what publishers and what we are looking for. Uh, so we are looking for teams who can handle production, development, QA, optionally live ops, I would say, art level design, game design, and games which are developed in Unity. And if you want to approach publisher, uh, like based on, on, on what we are uh, asking for uh, developers is always uh, good. You, know, you increase your chances to success and, and to get a deal done with publisher if you have like early KPIs collected. So uh, based on our example, we are looking for uh, KPIs and teams who have collected uh, KPIs from uh, tier one countries, I would say, so preferably US. Uh, as, as a minimum, I would say we are looking for day one to day seven retention rates. Uh, of course, if you have more retention um, uh, collected, meaning like day 14, day 30, day 90, uh, and so on and so on, that's, that's of course better. Uh, important is to have like st statistically correct pro. So uh, for such kind of paid UA campaigns, like minimum amount of, of users you would need to acquire to, to have like statistically collect data is like a uh, thousand users uh, from, for example, from Facebook. We look at uh, retentions, but we also look at ratios. So uh, our like generic benchmark for, for, uh, for uh, different genres is like day three divided by day one if it's higher than 50% and day seven divided by day one if it's higher than 40%. Uh, with such kind of numbers, uh, we expect the game uh, to, to be successful in the long term. Of course, uh, each genre has different numbers. Uh, so uh, I would like stick to 40, 20, 10 uh, retention rates. Uh, so they want they want day seven, day 30. Uh, so CPI, ROAS, like any monetization metrics, LTV, ARP, DAO. And, and uh, sometimes you need to ask uh, like yourself and, and, and see what publisher expects. Like some publishers are doing live publishing, meaning uh, like your games needs to be uh, at, at uh, soft launch stage, have KPIs, but some of them are also looking for prototypes, uh, which can be like, uh, you can work with publisher and within three to five months, so you are having like, um, amount of content to cover, let's say, uh, 30 days of, of playtime. So uh, uh, one uh, last thing I would like to mention. So uh, what is currently trending and what we are looking now for uh, casual and mid-core games. Uh, we are focused on like uh, long-term cooperation with developers and, and looking for uh, titles who have like long-term retention rates, uh, uh, so hybrid casual games, uh, definitely trending now, meaning like uh, hybrids like action plus RPG games. So, so action game with RPG elements or match free with RPG elements, uh, board games with RPG elements. Uh, because of the wider audience these games represent, match three, match two, uh, classic board games like solitaires, checkers, dominoes, chess. Uh, we have like uh, Coffee Break Games brand, uh, which the which internal studio which develops such kind of games. Uh, optionally, uh, so we we see a trend that these kind of classic board games also have uh, casual elements inside, like casual meta, casual look and feel, and so on. Board games with interesting meta, so. Uh, 
like word game with only core mechanic uh, in our opinion is uh, it will perform uh, not as good as uh, word games with plot or interesting meta gameplay uh, idle games um, uh, puzzle games mid core games pvp games sport games and so generally, I would say other games which uh, which uh, have uh, brought wide audience. So, what should be in publishing pitch deck? Uh, so, based on our experience and what we received so far from developers, um, our opinion on this is that uh, you need to have elevator pitch. Uh, so, each of the elements I'm uh, posting here, uh, will I will deep dive uh, in, in in the next slides, but. Uh, I would say at minimum it had had to pitch deck should have seven slides. So elevator pitch, content overview, uh, what you already have in the game, uh, maybe optional give the the core mechanic, core loop uh, description, uh, what is your team, what kind of track record do you have, technology, uh, what is the roadmap, what metrics you already collected, how you measure success of your game. Uh, what is your competition? Uh, because then if you know your competition, you know your market. And of course, the ask. Uh, so what you, are you looking for uh, financially in terms of like maybe other supports? So some teams are looking only for US support. Some teams uh, are looking also for uh, product support and so on and so on. So, uh, so here is the template. Uh, so first slide, of course, like uh, game name, company email, uh, store links, uh, and uh, icon. Uh, next, uh, I would like uh, say a little bit more about the team and, and why the team is strong, uh, why we should believe in you. Uh, so, um, uh, what is current uh, composition of the team? So, number of team members split by roles. So what technology uh, you guys are using for developing game? Uh, like, for example, we are looking only for for Unity uh, games. Uh, what backend technology has has been developed, uh, and what kind of stuff you used on the backend? If it's like PvP game, for example, do you use Photon and so on? So it's always good to list this kind of uh, stuff. And and what is like track record? So what each team member and 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 the whole team, uh, what kind of games you already developed? And maybe you have also KPIs out of, out of these games, so it also proves. Uh, that, that, that you have experience in what you are doing. So elevator pitch slide. Elevator pitch is like uh, some three sentence, uh, I would say maximum describing the game. So summary of the gameplay genre, uh, how is your game unique? Uh, and, and also it, uh, it allows us to, uh, to know the why, why this game uh, can be a fit for us. So. Uh, so prepare like three uh, gameplay screens, uh, which when we look at it, we can uh, capture the uh, what 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 the game is all about, and also one sentence, one to three sentence describing the game. I, I posted here examples. So it's a match. For example, it's a match-free game. Tap to change position of diamonds. When you match three or more diamonds, they will disappear. Earn points to unlock new levels. Uh, you can uh, also describe the meta. Uh, if you if your game have meta, so uh, I would uh, put uh, elevator pitch uh, this way. Next, it's always good always good to have gameplay video. So put YouTube uh, video or or GIF here uh, that presents your game and elements of your game. Uh, I would say no more than one to two minutes. Uh, it's it's fine enough. Then it's always good to uh, do a content and features overview. So present the current stage, what, what is already in the game. So it can be number of levels, number of worlds, enemies, bosses, depending on, on, on the game and the genre. Uh, what is the average playtime? Uh, to see whole game content, uh, you should have these kind of uh, numbers. You can also put the the all, uh, also put the current speed of creating new content. So, for example, our team is developing hundred levels per month. Um, what if you have like events? Uh, what is the number of daily events in the game? Number of daily challenges. 
what is the current feature set, uh, mechanics. Uh, also, you can describe uh, in, in one center story plot, storyline. Uh, additionally, you can describe the core loop. But the main thing is like uh, we would like to know, for example, is uh, how much content you already have. Uh, and and uh, you can uh, and you can put it uh, on on this slide. The next slide, like couple of slides, I would say uh, two to three slides, uh, would go for the metrics. So uh, first, uh, we are looking at the retention by cohorts. So for example, we we are using apps flyer, so we can see apps flyer screenshots. Uh, it's always uh, good to have like uh, right the the uh, the day one to day. Uh, day seven, day fourteen, day twenty-eight, and so on, so on. Retention rates, but also uh, put a screenshot of uh, out of your analytics system, so we can clearly see the the numbers. Uh, additionally, uh, when when we receive such kind of retention data, we uh, follow up with several questions because mo uh, most of the time developer don't provide it. So this can be like, please provide uh, analytic, uh, analytics tool you used because each, each tool uh, presents uh, quite like, there can be uh, differences in, in numbers. So, so mention the tool you use, provide the geo. Uh, if you did uh, you, uh, paid UA, uh, provide when you bought this, uh, this cohort of users, where you bought this uh, cohort of users. Uh, also, time is good to mention when, when the cam campaign was uh, was launched. Uh, provide, of course, the platform and number of installs you acquired to get uh, to reach these uh, retention numbers. Uh, additional slides uh, would contain uh, more metrics. Uh, so sometimes when we see that uh, there is drop in retention, we will follow up with the churn. Uh, so the the funnel, uh, how uh, how we want to understand the churn. So we want to see, for example, the the funnels uh, you have. Uh, how so how uh, how users progress uh, through the levels and so on and so on. Uh, so we can also put this on, onto slides. But there are other metrics which are good to see. So uh, any CPI out of the paid uh, UA. Uh, campaigns, RDAO, RPU, average revenue per paying user, uh, ROAS, uh, impression per user, uh, impressions per user per day, LTV, ECPMs, conversion rate to payers, top spenders in, in certain locations. Um, you can put uh, this kind of uh, data here. The DAU, uh, playtime per uh, device, session length, uh, number of sessions per day. Uh, it's also good to see. Uh, if you are, if you did pay the UA, you can also put the best performing creatives, uh, so videos uh, to to um, so we can like understand uh, your UA approach more. Also, if you have uh, this data, you can also put the, the split between the organics you have in the game and uh, paid users. Uh, that's also good, uh, good to know. Uh, next slide, I would put the uh, product roadmap. Uh, so progress so far you did, what kind of milestones you already achieved, and high-level project deliverables and milestones you are expecting to, to have. Uh, like very, uh, I would say, uh, general information. We can always have a follow-up call or uh, or discuss more uh, in details later on. Uh, but having like good overview of these milestones, uh, it's it's good to have in the pitch deck. So, um, additionally, what we recommend if you can like. If you have experience of measuring uh, impact of this, or you can project the impact of introducing this kind of features or milestones, uh, it's always good to have. Like um, the reverable impact, I mean, what benefit will we see from rolling out uh, certain features? Um, uh, or and, and the resolution here would be like, uh, you can put it in uh, monthly, uh, resolution, or you can put it like quarterly, um, this roadmap. 
Uh, another slide would be to, to have like a generic understanding of the economy. Uh, so how the game monetizes, share between ads versus IAPs. For example, my game is like 60% ads and 40% uh, IAPs. Uh, IAPs. Uh, and we additionally have subscription. Uh, you can also bake this data with some uh, numbers if you have this, uh, how successful you've been so far. Uh, you can also describe the, the, the core loop, as I mentioned before as well, uh, and, and how you implemented IAPs uh, or subscription, some screenshots, uh, but uh, it's, it's not necessary. I would more focus on, on generic uh, information, but, but of course, screenshots are always uh, welcome. Of course, if you have ads, you can also put some um, ad placements you have uh, in the game. Uh, uh, also, what is economy depth? Uh, on average, how much users should spend to complete the game uh, or discover the game content? Uh, if you have such kind of uh, uh, info, it's always uh, good to put it. Uh, ad placements, so, so this is something I also told. If your game monetized by ads, uh, provide some screenshots, show the description. Uh, what you get out of uh, rewarded video ads, what user gets out of uh, rewarded uh, video ads. And if you have like any metrics related to ads, monetization such as unique users that saw at least one ad or DAU share of users watching at least uh, one ad per DAU, ads per watcher and so on. Uh, it's always good to put. Um, if you want to know more about like how, how to track ads, uh, there is a couple of good lectures on YouTube. Uh, they are called How to Double Ads uh, Revenue from Slava Taraskin from uh, Unity Ads Team. I highly recommend this to, to, to watch. Uh, and uh, finally, what is the competition? Uh, so uh, what other games are in your niche? Uh, what they offer? Uh, I would say the, the, uh, the good to have here in terms of competition is uh, show whether you have any metrics out of like any KPIs out of your uh, competitors. Like if you have tools, uh, access to tools as up any, uh, up magic or uh, Uptopia, you can uh, get the number of downloads and so on, so on. Um, split between organics uh, and, and paid users, uh, retention numbers, for example, from Uptopia and, and so on. Uh, so provide these kind of numbers uh, and, also, and also the most successful game. Uh, we, we then, uh, out, outcome out of such kind of slide for us is that you know, uh, you, you know what you are doing and you understand your niche and your market, your audience. And uh, last but not least, what are you looking for? And uh, in terms of support and of course in terms of uh, financials, so what kind of support are you looking for? Uh, is it like uh, UA? plus uh, covering burn rates, or is it only like uh, marketing uh, money, so, mar uh, so uh, budget for covering UA, or uh, will you need additional support like optimizing monetization, uh, optimizing and, and product? Uh, what kind of help do you need? Do you need like player support? Do you need uh, any help in terms of like scaling up the team? Uh, like helping you out with processes or hiring or you need any PR help, it's always good to understand your, your needs. Uh, and, uh, and, and financials, of course. So if you have any rounds, uh, you have like cap table, uh, it's always good to, to, to present it. So fundraising so far, uh, your currently studio monthly burn rate, uh, resource requirements and, and use of funds. Uh, uh, shortly about like what we what we offer, but uh, what you can expect from other publishers offer, uh, offering uh, you. Uh, we of course offer like production support, monetization, analytics uh, and analytics out of our like uh, internally developed BI system. Uh, promotion, financing, UA, localization, distribution, 
uh, in, for example, APAC countries. Uh, we have dedicated team in APAC uh, to support developers uh, and, and many other uh, support. And uh, that's from, from me now. Um, I will post this presentation on my LinkedIn uh, and share the, the, uh, the link with organizers. You can always uh, reach me out via LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you, have, if you have any questions, I would be more than welcome to, uh, to answer them now. Thank you very much, Lukas. Thank you. That was a very full insight information uh, presentation with a lot of information. Thank you. Thank I guess you. it was very um, informative and uh, useful for the developers watching us. Thank we you. have a few questions, short ones though, because we don't have much time left, but um, later on, I'm sure you'll be happy to answer them. Yes, of course. Sure. All right, so the first one, uh, you mentioned actually um, the metrics that you need, you need to see from developers to actually get your attention. Well, what if say, it, they, they're not as good in numbers, but the idea is just so great that you loved it from the first sight. Has it ever happened to you? Um, yes, it happened. Uh, we, we can all, always have discussion, uh, but like uh, what, we, uh, what we do as well uh, is we also, if we have such kind of developer that he doesn't collect numbers, we are also having some follow-up materials, how to set up the campaign. Uh, how to measure the results of the campaign. So we have like very uh, deep uh, tutorials how to do it. But uh, but of course we can we can uh, we can look at the game if the idea is innovative. It's casual game uh, with mm -hmm. with uh, and the, the developer wants to uh, cooperate in long term. We are always welcome. The, such kind of teams are always welcome. So if game is not published yet and they're in your numbers as of yet so do you you would still look into it and see what yeah, yeah we always uh, yes of course uh, we always uh, for, for such kind of teams we always uh, do uh, provide feedback uh, so uh, so yes such kind of teams are always welcome mm -hmm. uh, we also encourage teams to do like test campaigns uh, paid ua campaigns in like let's say tier four uh, countries like countries which have like low cpi mm -hmm. uh, that's always some some kind of reference but if the the team didn't publish their game uh, always like they are welcome to to send the game to us. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And one more question from Vladimir Kavishnikov. Um, um, he's saying that they use Unity, but how does it actually influence the publisher's choice? Does it matter? Yeah. So uh, typically, uh, like um, fr from our example, we use uh, Unity because we expect Unity games because our infrastructure is prepared for uh, this kind of games, meaning like we have dedicated SDK. Which uh, which contains our analytic uh, connection to our analytic system, as well as uh, wrapping uh, several ad networks. So uh, each publisher has their own SDK, uh, which uh, which needs to match, which is like developed for certain uh, stack. So it can be Unity, it can be HTML5. But it's always good to, to ask publisher uh, what are their capacities in terms of technology and integration. Thank you very much. That's a very important moment. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, we are running out of time a little bit, but I know that there are more questions in the chat. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully if you have time now after the session, yes, yes, sure. you can answer them. One of the questions was uh, if you could repeat what kind of games you're looking for. So you never know, maybe you'll find the next one there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so casual games uh, and uh, mid-core games. Uh, we are not focused on, on hyper-casual games. We are now focused on casual and mid-core games that can like uh, uh, that that can retain users in the in the long term. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm sure you'll be um, able to clarify a bit more in that. Sure. With the questions. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining us. It was fantastic Thank to you. have you in the studio. Hopefully see you very soon. Yes, have I you. hope too. Thanks for inviting me and uh, have a good conference. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.